the recording is. Thank you. All right. Uh, so what we're going to be looking at today is um, a quick recap of what we recently did in the last session. Right. So we looked at three uh, the last three principles in the last session. We will do a quick recap. And then once we do that, we will uh, look at all the examples so that everybody has added to the slide deck. Uh, let me just share, change the mode here. OK. Clear visibility? Yes. Thank you. All right. So first we looked at was uh, aesthetics and minimalist uh, design. What does what did we look at in that was that as a human tendency, uh, how humans look at things is if it is well organized, neat, aesthetically good, then it works. That is a psychological aspect. Okay, that is how people generally approach it. Things not generally it is it's a just a human tendency that okay something that looks good works well. Okay, <coughs> sorry. So while that is true, it is also important that when you have aesthetics um, included in your design, your design look, looks pleasing and all of that, it also we also have to balance it with that it is not really too, um, it is not just visually there, uh, relevant visuals are there. It's just not visually cramped up, not confusing. It's minimal and it is aiding and giving signals for the users to take actions. So that is this is very important, right? When we say minimalism has to be there, let's not confuse it with the minimalism trend that is there, because that is completely different. Here, minimalism means that it is functional, it is good, it is helping users to take actions, while it is aesthetics too, OK? And we looked at different examples. Uh, we looked at some of these examples that how can you make uh, your product look uh, interesting, engaging, even if it is really basic functionalities that is there. What are really interesting concepts that you can bring, which are really um, very at an expectation level, basic level, or interesting level. Um, however, not very, too much um, uh, distracting from the core functionality, right? We looked at how you can reduce noise. Again, something which is signal versus noise. Give attention to signals that you are giving to the user for doing um, any kind of interactions that they're supposed to be doing on that, uh, on that um, specific uh, page area. OK. So that is what it was in reference to. Um, aesthetics and minimalism. The second one is that we looked at was help users recognize diagrams and re recover from errors. What does it mean is that user has taken an action, landed up onto a specific area where you know there is there was there is an error that has occurred. There is no data that is found. Something went wrong in the system. What can the user do? User has requested for some process to happen. It did not complete. Uh, something failed in between. What is that the user can do? What is the system? Where where did things go wrong? Uh, what is the system going to be doing some that processing? Or the user is supposed to be doing some corrective actions to do that. So help the user rec recognize and be able to cor take corrective actions to continue with the process that they intend to do, right? So we looked at, uh, OK, there is some example that is added here. I'll just push it down. OK, one second. Yeah. OK, all right. Yeah. So we looked at different examples um, on how you can communicate to the user that things have gone wrong without confusing the user. Uh, we saw, yeah, this was one more example. This was an e-commerce example. Of course, their intent and goal is different. 
but from an e learning perspective if you are uh, you know the user is requested for something and you are saying okay the system has understood something and you are showing some data is something that the user will not be able to tolerate that that is unacceptable you cannot show wrong data okay again i am reiterating that this is an e commerce example so their goal is different r is arts in e learning is different right so you give a clear information this is just a search that is failed there are different scenarios when actions cannot be completed how do you inform the user how do you help the user correct their actions is something that you have to communicate okay uh, the message have to be concise they have to be brief and uh, all of that right give in uh, hypertext uh, links basic some information and they can reach to an elaborate information uh, probably in an help uh, documented somewhere else and things like that so help the user do that the next one that we saw was help and documentation now this is the space which is uh, where you give really good kind of documentation about each of your features how they are going to be functioning and all of that now how do you um, how do you set up this space of help and documentation will again uh, completely be based on your context and all of that the only aspect that you have to always remember is there is uh, there is proactive help uh, and there is reactive help here so when we are saying proactive help and reactive help we looked at different things that okay there is push and there is pull of information that is there so we looked at push examples we looked at pull examples a push is something that the system pushes as information to you it could be a new feature it could be an improvement that is done it could be an action that you can take differently and things like that so this is the the system is letting you know about it but the information is something that you would not request it it just popped up on screen that okay something like this these are things that we have recently done or you can do some things in a different way and all of that the user is in completely intending to has come to the product or doing some actions for a different goal altogether but the system has pushed information the user might just read it but may not really recall it later because uh, the it is you know it is an information just interrupted the action and the user could have just glanced through it read it but not probably stored it in their memory right while when there is relevant information while the user is taking an action it becomes uh, it's an advantage because a user is processing that information that okay i have to complete this action so i have to consider all of these points all of these points are going to be helping me to complete my actions in the manner that it has to be completed successfully so they will re remember you know they will understand it remember it recall it for uh, later right so that's an advantage now how do you use push information how do you use uh, pull information is something completely based on your context we are nobody is saying here don't push information only pull information just see to it that when you are pushing information user may just miss it out don't you know consider ha maine to bataya i shared it at the onboarding uh, screen so you know user might have uh, will remember it don't expect that okay so see to it that you give adequate information at the right time while the uh, user is performing a specific action too adequate is a very important word adequate information is a very important word here because uh, how much information to give at what point of time is extremely important right do you share information on tool tip or would you show inf information up front is completely based on how much impact that information is going to be going to be for the user to complete that action right anything that is going to cause an error an issue at a later point of time you would not want to hide it into a tool tip right you might want to at least put a one liner up front saying that you know you have to do these things in this manner so that this is successful and for more information you can hover you can show it a tool tip or you can uh, link it to your elaborate uh, help article that is there in your help um, uh, section right so that is important uh, okay there is something that is added here there were certain examples that had added yeah this is the one 
okay i'll just yeah so here what we've seen is one of the examples of how what is a reactive help and a more elaborate help where you know you help the user to the user is already stuck uh, not sure uh, is wanting to understand more that is this feature you know this is allowing me to probably do this thing but can it allow me to you know import some something else also or export something else also so are there options of doing this action in a different way right so a lot of scenarios why the user will really come to help is because now they really need help right that is when they are going to be coming to help so make it simple for them show up uh, you know frequently uh, asked questions or articles layer them up clearly so that you know don't make this uh, page where the user is going to be discovering things but help them um, approach the information by categorizing it clearly uh, putting keywords up front uh, making your search smarter so that you know if you search a, a keyword give articles around it so that uh, that can be though that article specific uh, article can be reached so there are different ways that you can do this but give it a lot of thought there are a lot of these ready to use help um, products that typically uh, we use with uh, but then see to it that they are um, you know some of these criteria of how a help documentation a manual or whatever we call it help center is something that is usable and uh, see to it that the articles or latest articles the most required articles how do you keep it up front on the system so that they are quickly reachable right yeah i think yes and we can see there are some some, some examples that have got added here uh, so let's look at those examples now uh, okay uh, because ambilika will have to uh, drop off early uh, let's take up her examples first so ambilika over to you tell me which slide should i go to is it is this one the one that you are yeah okay i can see that you're working on this over to you yes Rupali. so this is the example of uh, simple design so hmm. here we look at uh, how each company's logo has um, evolved their self over a period of time and uh, uh, this is very sim simple thing and they remove any unnecessary and any any unnecessary elements and they uh, emphasize simplified design as much as possible okay. and um, and uh, and they use plenty of white space to create sense of uh, openness and balance and uh, and uh, the focus on main function rather than focus on other other unnecessary unwanted cluttered and messy things and uh, they create hierarchy also the most important things is emphasized over here see if you can see the logo of uh warner brothers so before 80s how the logos were unnecessary 3d uh, shapes and all uh, and it's not visible at all uh, the text in between but over a period of time they evolved their logo and they they designed the flat and necessary clutters removed from here and uh, likewise other also uh, the mozilla uh, firefox and other uh, logos also uh, with the same just example nike only the tick mark that's it that is enough for the brand uh, information that this is the brand so without without sometimes without writing the text of nike nike so also likewise uh, apple also are doing the same so this is a okay thing. yeah this is interesting and so this is a completely different example so this is not an interaction designer the example what uh, ambalika has done is she has taken an example of logo design here a more right so a more graphical approach of 
having only whatever is relevant and the most important and the minimalist. This is the minimalist trend that we are talking about, right? Where you really bring something to only the basic most that is required. And that is what the current trend is. So this is what we've been calling as cumorphic, where you have all these, these bewells and all of that. You know, you can visualize that this is coming, uh, you know, all up and uh, it is showing all of that. So this is different. Uh, all of these are different and this is the current trend yeah so this is a graphical or a logo design example that you have brought up no we can yeah yeah that is there but we can uh we can match this logos with uh, our interface as well so sometimes our interface also a lot of unwanted things we put there so maybe it will looks good but uh for user point of view maybe they they, they have some confusion while using the our product so it's better to have a minimal and a flat design and a lot of space so it will be good for the user to understand what they want to do they are without or and uh, as on well the novice user mm. uh, so it will be very helpful for them to understand design clearly and mm. for uh, yeah yeah so but Amalika, i just want to bring this important point is that in this principle because we are looking at usability okay mm -hmm. because we are looking at usability this principle the way uh, jacob nielsen advocates this principle they are not saying don't use a uh, skeuomorphism do not they are not saying use flat design okay no. they are not propagating that okay i just want to clarify that mm -hmm. for everybody's benefit while we are saying this this is yes minimalism but in this principle, they are not saying anywhere that you have to stick to flat design. Okay, that's not what this is. It is they are saying in your experience, in your interactions, in your layouts, uh, in your visual design, see to it that there is minimalism in way so that the user receives signals for them to complete that interaction. They are not saying that use flat design. Of course, this is the trend, which is right. I agree to that. But if the trend changes, and you know, trends always, that is what trends are, right? Trends would change uh, in, the, in the future. And they, if they bring something else, that doesn't mean the principal impacts. I just want to clarify it for everybody's benefit. Yeah. Right? Yes. Uh, the other day, you have shown uh, two teapots uh, example. Yeah, so the mm -hmm. teapot example, yes. Thank you for being here. Good that you are clarifying that. So, now the teapot, yeah. You are able to see the screen. Uh, what yeah. I'm showing the teapots. Okay. So the teapots here, what it is talking about is the function part of it. So here, if you have a, this curvy spout, what happens is it becomes difficult for anybody to clean. So if the functionality, the usability is impacted there right to manageability of things is impacted there versus this yeah so likewise the logos there sometimes they use a uh, 3d approach so maybe it's not visible maybe it is uh not sometimes understandable from yeah. user point of view so it's like i think it's like like your teapot no so, but that, no, it is not like the teapot the functionality is not going to be changing right the functionality is not going to be changing it is just the visual the visual design that is changing of this okay i would want you ambalika to just deep dive into this so that uh, yeah uh, this is flat design so let's not get confused with flat design and what is mentioned here aesthetics and minimalism Min so that is why i've been clarifying minimalism and the minimalistic trend are two different things, right? What you brought here is a minimalistic trend, which is true, right? Which is which is which is good. It is true. Uh, all of that is there. But in usability heuristics, this is not what it is saying. Got it? It yeah. just yeah interaction part. And how are you going to be using it? That is, that is the usage is something that is there. Yeah. 
okay do you have any other uh, example for any other principle that you've added that you yeah. would want i have added another in in this? Error, error, yeah next one before okay. before that do you have the slide number with you 114 114 this one got it. so this is a uh, uh, principle number nine so help user to recognize their error prevention this so yeah. this is uh, the right one is air france uh, app screen so where they written there that something is missing or something is wrong while they fill the uh, their email id and all the forms but it's not clear that where i we have to go and uh, what we have to do from any uh, we don't have any clear indication to exit from here it's about what is the way out from the uh, uh, from the from this error so this is the one thing and from the left side we can see that if my username not found i can i can go and click the recover my username so it is easy uh it is actually easy to understand uh the error message is very clear and if this system is not able to uh, find the find my id they can you can easily recover by clicking uh the link of uh, above yeah the, so they can user can easily way out from this uh if they stuck anywhere yeah good examples both of these are perfect examples one of this is that it is you know very nicely putting that we could not find an account with uh, that username so it is helping you recognize what the problem is it is helping you diagnose this problem can we help you recover your username so you you know that okay I, this can be taken care of by somebody with somebody's help i'll be able to recover it so yes it is helping you diagnose so this is a good example of this is passed as a principle this is yes an example that how it is failed that okay there is an error that has happened and you are giving me so many things actually it is informing that title is mandatory it is telling you all the rules but the way it is telling me is something that it's going to be very difficult for me to eventually you know it's just telling me but not the the display of this is not correct even they are not showing any uh, solution to how to uh, overcome this situation or exit from this screen if i click on okay that is fine but yeah. uh, uh, what is the way out from this what i have to do next yeah so it is telling you that you know the title is mandatory so you have not put the title probably uh, mm. it is telling you the first name is also mandatory the date of birth is mandatory phone number is and then you have to also click on the terms and conditions and all so it is giving you all the instruction club together the presentation is not great and the way they are handling this error and recovery and all of that is not great there are different ways in which this can be solved but you are right no it is not helping the user really recover it is just you know making you know adding more pressure on oh there are a lot of things that i have to do here things like that yeah so we cannot just say because you know the yeah you know help uh, so we are helping you recognize we are helping you diagnose diagnose the problem and how can you recover the problem it is doing all of that but it is not doing it properly it is also uh, for user having cognitive load to understand the things yeah. from recover for so it is correct 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 okay any thoughts points for others uh, to anybody wants to contribute to this hi rupali arubya uh, what i can see that the fast screen uh, when there is an error so it is a, a very clear message and a, a nice help to uh, recover but i think that the uh, field that is highlighted that should be the same uh, color concept or something like that uh, that uh, easily recognize that it is an error so it is highlighted with this uh, same green one hmm. so that's my point is 
So mm-hmm. we mean, I think uh, it should be red and uh, strongly highlighted. Yes, yes, yes. Or something can be a similar kind of that background of the error message. Correct. So there are there are different problems uh, through different ways of enhancing, but we are just focusing on that. Yes. Oh, is there going to be you no know, adequate um, error? To ho gaya? Is that the supporting things? So we are just focusing on that for now. But you are yeah. right. You have a point. Yes. Okay. Is there anything else, Ambalika, um, that you've added and that we want to discuss? No, oh. All right. Thank you. Okay. Let's go back to the previous principle. Uh, Arup, yes. Yes. Yeah, so uh, here I have added just uh, three screens from two uh, websites. That first one is from the case study of UX, that is. Uh, a very uh, visually pleasing and there is no unwanted elements and only on the necessary informations that you have uh, you can see that uh, there is a lot of white space in that screen also but mm-hmm. what they have used that is very uh, clearly that yeah the differentiate uh, uh, with the colors to highlight the uh, point and there is a clear nice play button that helps you to recognize that yeah that just on click on that play button it will go the next one and i can see the study also and this next one also the same thing that if you just uh, scroll down a bit uh, this uh, this this image so there is also just a list down of the uh, previous case studies already have and uh, nicely the, in the left panel you can see only the uh, categories are there that you can just click on it and go with this particular category and uh, you can uh, see the case study of this particular one correct and that's a very good important point right that what do you want the user to focus on when the user lands um and uh, you know starts to understand ki where am i standing here right very clear information knows that okay wherever i'm landed i've landed at the correct place and the, uh, the designer could have just put this on the right hand side as a list this on the left hand side as a list but imagine how much of noise that would have caused versus what they have done here uh yes okay and the second is for the adobe stock that uh, or yeah anything uh, for this adobe uh, website also the sign in screen that is a very minimalistic and also, it is very aesthetic, and uh, you can see that only uh, one thing at a time. Just you have to put the password for a uh, sort username first, and then you have to click on the continue, and then you have to go for the password also. Yeah. Now, both of these you've taken as landing examples, and I don't see yes. a lot of people have added examples this time. But you know, it would have been uh, interesting to see different pages also, other than the landing screen. Landing screens usually are. Uh, most of the times the trend is that you know you want to keep it less cluttered and all of that yes, yes. so these are great examples but it would have been great you know somebody would have put in some other examples also hmm. here i i have a little different opinion Aru. uh i understand like uh, this is uh, no unwanted elements and only necessary information but the color wise i don't think that is a pleasing because maybe the black color and maybe the purple, which is towards the black, mm. I don't feel so in that way. Uh, second thing, that play button somewhere, I feel like it should be either it should be in center. It I feel it's like uh, somewhere is hanging. Maybe it's because the designer who has kept the close to the text, but I don't Get think it. that visually pleasing. That may be a subjective also, uh, but yeah. This is the thing within these three uh, screens. I really like that the uh, signing that was I can I can consider as an aesthetic and minimalistic design. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and to your point, to add to your point, Karuna, you're right. You know, see, there are, when we say aesthetics and aesthetics again, right? It's a combination uh, of again um, approaching design more methodically and also having beauty in it it's a combination of that and when you say that okay approaching it more scientifically or more organized step by step then you would say i want to add to the just all principles right so uh, uh, all the design principles and now i'm not talking about interaction principles but i'm talking about 
visual design principles right so visual design principles how many how what are the principles that have been taken care of is something that is again going to be important right so it is not art here that you start putting things the layouting is not art mm. correct uh, uh, colors use of colors is also not art correct you so there is uh, when i'm saying not art it basically there is a way to approach it why this color versus why not this color why this position versus why not that position so there uh, there is always a um, thought that is given on all of these things and these things are also very important rather than you know uh, just uh, uh, taking these calls uh, that come naturally to your mind instead of doing that which is where that is what we categorize as art but instead of doing that first ap approach it more methodically and then and the, the reason why karuna you're feeling this this is because it is not falling into a layout as such right it is not centralized or it is not yes there no balance no contrast actually so contrast is also a different thing you know, like black and the purple it's going towards it's not a contrasting exa exactly and yeah. even on the purple this white color i have doubt that uh, maybe having the some uh, weak region or weak uh, eyesight they might will not able to read that one it's a white and top of that it's a bold mm. yeah from an accessibility standard we don't know if it will pass or yeah. fail yeah these are considerations okay. that have to be yeah taken. so we should always try when we are following principle ensure that the other principle also shouldn't be uh, taken care of compromised yeah the combination of it correct correct okay let's look at the next one yes arup now this is something which is help user recognize diagnose and recover from errors yes so this is again for the uh, same for first one is adobe and second one is for the amazon uh, site so again this uh, when i'm putting a wrong email address they have just highlighted it to identify easily and there is a clear and precise message that says that yeah that's an error and uh, we have to correct it for both the ones but here it is saying please enter an email address this is acha there is no dot aage uske kuch nahi hai got it there was a problem your password is incorrect incorrect yes got it all right any other examples thoughts there was uh, what is says is your password is incorrect mm -hmm. and they are given the forget your value yeah both are good good example Mm -hmm. yeah. and for further security right so there is a thought that there is a thought that uh, you know no, not a thought but it's also a security um, aspect that many a times you know how much information that you give for logging in is also very important right typically when you are adding a username and a password the system may not tell you what went wrong is the username went wrong or the password because there are bots mm -hmm. trying to work on this and then they just you know try to hack your system so with all of those security concerns sometimes it is that you know it clearly doesn't mention but every every product platform handles it in a different way so not necessarily uh, you know if you are your product is approaching in a different way like for example frost in frost we have not um, uh we don't co communicate to the user we don't message to the user that what went wrong there is a different way of uh, co taking a corrective action all right but um, not clearly mentioning what went wrong again because of the security reasons okay next one yes sohail yeah so i think this can also be considered in that error uh, space because this can be after the event which has happened suppose you have added some items in your cart and then removed it and then you land on this page or you are in new uh, uh, you are uh, coming up on a new screen where you are getting the experience for the first time suppose a list of items which you need to create and there is no list as such the first experience you will get to see 
some kind of graphics and some call to action to it, so like what you can do in that case. Yeah. So this is after the user has uh, tried to find some uh, something or to order. Added, added some items in the cart and then removed it later. OK. So it says your cart is empty and something from add something from the menu. Yeah. And so then earlier, earlier, what experience was that you need to browse a restaurant or you need to exit from here. So what it happens, it takes you back to the home page, not from the page which you came from here, like Correct. from the restaurant and all. So Correct. this back button is taking you to exact the position from where you picked up the food item. Got so it. you don't need to research everything again. Correct. That is the two kind of actions they have given over here. I just start from the first or go back to the previous. Correct. Correct. So while this is something that is aesthetically displayed, it is also giving you the way to uh, diagnose your and recover to all of these things. Uh, however, how the aesthetics can be further improved, right? Is it completely taken? You know, is it successful? For a moment, I could also get confused that I'm just talking about aesthetics here, right? And especially because we are on the diagnose. So when you're using aesthetics, it's good to have that. But then if it is, if the aesthetics shows that it reassures you that, OK, it's done. You know, you all probably you have already ordered. What is it telling me? Is there a confusion that is there or it is telling me that this is empty? You know, your cart is empty. There is nothing that is there. So that empty experience versus completed experience, is the user going to be confused? Things like that you have to just take care of. So, yeah. when so I this is, that's for yeah. the experience wise, like suppose I've done some action and then I'm seeing this. So user is related to that. Like hmm. hey, myself, I've done that. Uh, remove the item from the card. Hmm. Correct. Right. Yeah. And things like, you know, how bold would you want to show this information? What is the case that you would want to show this information? This is a statement, right? And it is not a button. So when do you give a title case? Where when do you give a sentence case? These are aspects of aesthetics also. Very responsibly, we have to handle this. Right. So what I'm trying to say is that when you are showing a screen which is an empty or which has an error and if you are putting some aesthetics to it some language to it see to it you handle it very carefully that is what i'm trying to say any other thoughts on this anybody okay let's move on to the next one Nilesh. yeah so uh now this is the screen that we get when we launch the application and the location is not on so uh, like the address is the uh, is something that is very important and if uh, like so it forms if your location is not on so to add the location manually or allow location access yeah so what it is doing is if you want to just you know is diagnose recover from error if you want to just point it out can you just do that what is recognize what is diagnose what is recover from error uh, yeah so uh, so i'm recognizing like the address is not set in and uh, recover is i would set the location manually or uh, yeah so recognize is we are not able to locate you. No. What was the problem that happened? The system just could not locate you. So you are able to recognize what went wrong. Yeah. Right? Now what it is saying, how do you diagnose is that, OK, please grant us access. And so this is recover and this is diagnose. So this is also, I would say, diagnose that, you know, you understand where the problem is, right? You recognize and diagnose, and this is how what it is doing is it is telling you how to recover through the error, right? And it is giving you a quick access to be able to recover, right? You want to allow access, that is how you recover. You want to enter a location manually, that is how you recover. But this is giving you 
clear information how do you recover yes any thoughts questions and again see look at this visual not distracting not overpowering the language that is used the casing that is used clear states why are we are not able to locate you simple language nothing complicated here nothing that is distracting here nothing that you know you were confusing ki ho raha locate nahi ho raha kya there is no ambiguity there and very clear instructions also how you want to allow location access automatically or would you want to do it manually very clearly and the easier option is allow location access and that is what is highlighted that is what it is highlighted perfect without you know doing a lot of manual actions here you just do this we will take care of the rest this is recommended that is why it is highlighted very good so exactly you know the way uh, when you see that there is an interaction that worked if you start breaking it up and trying to map why it worked then it becomes there is a learning that happens there if you just like it and leave it that's another thing you you know just bypassed the learning aspect of it but if you break it down and say why this is working then that is when you know the real learning would happen yeah okay good example english yeah all right so i think th this is the example of that principle and there is one more example this is the one so hill that you are you are adding i can see you are on the screen probably you are adding this yeah i added this okay you want to talk this is for the detailed uh, gmail wala experience so if there is a new user suppose some age specific limit users are using gmail for the first time or shifting from another product so there is a menu option which google gives on your help desk so it gives option for help training and updates so when you go in training then you get to see all these options up front like what you want to do from gmail what is the quick start guides and everything else very well laid out thing right so because here also it is telling that you can get started learn, learn by product so you know that is broken up and here you are gmail training and help on this page what are all of you, know, you can get uh, quick start guides and cheat sheets and productivity guides troubleshooting and other resources very well laid out information so you can really quickly browse through it and comprehend what is this page going to be doing it is also telling me there are related articles that i get jump across and then describe your issue see it's not just saying search it's not just saying search or find it is saying describe what your issue is anything else any other observations so there are more items below it but hmm. due to screen limitations i have not added yeah in the below items they have uh, further segregated those in two categories if you i can share you that link this chat yeah Yes, so yeah, so these are further they have break down what experience you are having any issues or you want to know more about it. So whether you want to optimize your Gmail inbox, get some help from assistance or improve how to connect with other users of the Gmail. Correct. Mm -hmm. and this is a very good information that you know in reference to this what are you really going to be receiving in this it is giving you a summary of this all of this here it is giving you a summary correct so that is good before even i select this link i know what to expect here 
and if it is you know what i'm going to be i'm looking for another is the aesthetics aspect of it right look at this the help can be really drab and extremely boring right but the visuals that they have added here choose a section to give feedback on acha this is what they have added here okay so look at it interesting okay anyways so uh, this is uh, this is what is minimal aesthetics it's help it's a nice way to really break the monotony of the page making it look really drab and boring and it is relevant also somewhere right it is not really something that is functional but it is see here also uh, gmail productivity guides not anything is going to be really helpful you cannot make sense of it is not an infographic it's not an infographic it is not giving you information per se so that you can understand anything that is going to be shown but this is a visual aid yeah usme ek ek component they have highlighted jaise manage important sensitive image usme jo dot hai that is the notification jaise upar wala star hai so that they are like highlighting individual uh, features that they are having in that gmail correct and mm -hmm. yes that's so that is it is still a visual relief Yes. So it's just telling you ah uh, you know it's nice pleasing to the eyes and all of that not giving a lot of but it they have made it relevant not something that is completely out of place it they have made, made it relevant so that's a good example yeah the nature contrast is good the uh, chunking information is good the having the proper uh, balance yeah, and the spacing yeah. all these are things good yeah. but still i would say uh even we have the we are looking at this uh, page and we feel like it does a good uh, good experience possibly but there may be some people who are experiencing the bad you know it's still uh, the gmail i'm using so many years but i still get confused with that when it is like uh, 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 uh email chain i get confused whether i'm sending to that particular person or to all or something like that mm -hmm. so it's like the gmail uh, that the google have always a good for our product but there is a possibility that something is also the uh, the other people might be facing some uh, bad experience yeah yeah correct so overall the product and there could be some gaps that are there um, you're right so the uh, so understand in this way now google is such a big company they do research and then for the one one feature they take a lot of efforts after that they create this good feature and still the people are having some bad experience so if you see from our side we also need to take a lot of efforts we need to always see from the data point of view we need to see from whom we are designing and what we can do what uh, what we have learned the uh, principles since couple of days with rupali so how we can apply that okay and we just we just keep testing like whether it's a, it's a good experience and if it is a gap where we can where we can uh, reduce it correct correct as a designer it becomes very important that we have our analytical thinking critical thinking always those you know antennas on uh, extremely important uh, good products popular products established products could be doing certain things in certain manner that doesn't mean that is the the only correct way when you are getting inspired with certain things it is good to be inspired it is always good to be looking out um studying or everything that is uh, trending and all of that or getting you know futuristic and things like that but critical mindset analytical mindset as designers is extremely important this product did this person told customer asked user said no then your role gets diluted if you are not receiving this information you know and not working on it that information before reflecting in your product how do you want to handle that is something that has to be done very responsibly and our heuristic principles are something that are always going to be um, of okay, helping us be on track to do good interaction design correct um and that is going to be of course use uh, aiding user experience so we have covered all of these principles uh, in the last few days uh, we have discussed a lot of examples so great sessions how we want to move ahead on this is uh, we 
are also between him and then Mia, we are also thinking how do we again the you know now knowledge is there we have some kind of practice that we've done but how can we take this a step ahead and uh, see to it that you know you start working on it so even if there are certain gaps that are there we will fill those gaps together to see to it that we are crystal clear on these heuristics and we start applying those in our regular design work and our review work right so that is the eventual intent this series of sessions is done today but we are also thinking about uh, how we can take it ahead okay so that's one thing another thing is that this is a very good poster uh, where all of these principles are laid out up front on one a4 or a letter size uh, by you know nielsen group themselves right so and this is available on their site too uh, it's uh, you know i we can share that link with you or for the, to access this uh, what him and then i were thinking is that can, if we can get this as a printed copy uh, for anybody who is interested uh, so what we've done is we have created a small form. Uh, we'll share that form with you. I can share that form right away here and also share the form uh, on our group. So if you're interested, okay, tell me if you are able to access this form and uh, respond to it. If you're interested, now what you're planning to do is that I will also bring up the form on this on this page, right? So what we are planning to do is print the, this this just one single poster. Of course, they have they have posters for all of these in a four size. So you will have one poster for uh, visibility of system status and all of that. They have it on their site, so you can just download some of these posters if you are interested. And we have also and these are the posters that I'm talking about, right? Uh, if you if you if you just click on this you will be able to go to that side so this is the poster these are different posters that are there but we are we are going to be we are thinking of printing only one poster that is this poster which is a summary of all the principles in one shot so this is if you have your home desk and if you have a wall in front of you on the side somewhere and if you want to pin it up on that uh, feel free to do that if you're at your office desk and you have your space to, uh, you know, uh, say, put, stick it on, on your desk, do that. And this is not mandatory. It is only people if you are, oh, you're willing to have this kind of a poster which can be printed on an A4 size paper and shared with everybody. We are going to be looking for a good quality A4 size uh, paper for printing purposes free of cost all of that right and you can collect it either from mumbai office or Kol kolkata office will not be able to post it to everybody's house so not that kind of a service we are intending to do but if you are willing to do that please fill this form if you're not interested up and say no i'm not i'll not be able to use this uh, printed uh, not a uh, pr uh, printed poster that's fine uh, click not applicable if you're willing uh, select yes uh, tell us from where you're going to be picking it up okay any question thoughts on everything that we have said today and uh, in any of our prior sessions ideas for taking this ahead whatever you want to talk about feel free I think like we have in this uh, session at least 16 to 17 and I maybe the uh, five or 10 people they have enjoyed it. How about if one uh, one topic that the, each uh, of our colleagues will come and uh, speak about that and share the examples, how you have presented Rupali's on similar way. Mm -hmm. But it's only for one small topic, any, any topic. OK. That was the intent of our discussion sessions. Every five days discussion session was that was exactly the intent that you you reflect, uh, come up with different examples uh, in whatever you are exposed to in your life or on online, whatever you see. That was the intent of that, the, all the Friday sessions. But what you're saying is that 
uh, one person or a group of people work on one principle and present it to others that is what you're suggesting right uh, no i'm saying like say, let's example there is a very very easily that everybody but uh, we're about a persona okay let's example so he is talking about a persona maybe the other people they will they will study also persona at their own space and they will add into that the other other part which might be so hell hasn't uh, when he was presenting, he might have skipped or he didn't find that content. So the other people will start talk, talking about that. You know, in persona, this can also happen. So it's in that way the, the entire our group will understand in depth about the persona. OK, so you are saying beyond heuristics, other than heuristics, let's take up certain things. Is that what you're yes. saying? Yes, yes. OK, yes. got it. Achha. Yes. Yeah, thanks for clarifying. Yeah, got it. Yeah. So, yeah, that is something that uh, I think Hemant has been requesting for a very long time. You know, individuals, if we can just pick up topics and uh, present it to everybody, uh, somehow people get absorbed with their work and not are able to, you know, complete their training programs. And everybody wants to do a perfect uh, training program. Therefore, I think, therefore, they take a lot of time. I don't know what is the reason, but that is why uh and then you know there is a lot of follow-up that has to be done that is the only thing but anybody that's an open uh i think request from him and for a very long time any point of time anybody wants to take training on any kind of a subject please feel free to propose that uh let uh, uh, uh him and to know about the topic work with him about that topic and he'll be he help you to enable that or we can also suggest we can give the number of subjects to them and they can pick up whichever they feel convenient and then they can uh, come up with the idea like uh, presenting the things like that sure sure okay anybody else there is no bad idea all good ideas Okay, everybody is in a Friday mood. Kabi Friday khatam hoga, and then I'm going to have a <laughs> to enjoy. Okay. Hi, Rupali. Yeah, the last uh, the poster concept, uh, I pretty much like that. So yeah, every time if I want to check it out, so it is always in my front of the wall, and it is prompting. Yeah, that is a good idea. Thanks for sharing that. That's great. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we are at the end of the hour, and um, if there is any, nothing that anybody wants to talk about, it is um, we. Uh, it's fine, and we always have the UX group open. So any reflections, ideas, questions, uh, you find more examples, you can keep doing that, and um, we will also come up. As I said, um, you know, we will also see to it how we can have this more application oriented and be able to clarify more and more things while we do that and everything is evolving right and at very very high speed especially with the whole ai uh, concepts getting integrated with the products at a super exponential speed that they are going there is going to be heuristics that we will have to you know hold on to very very strongly uh you know it's like your horse that is restarted going to be running even faster so have your grip stronger so and you know, then therefore it becomes even further uh, important for us to understand principles clearly uh, and be able to always keep in mind uh, things like that, right? So uh, if you are somebody who always likes to think about architecture or layouts or color combinations or uh, whatever it is, right? You will always uh, uh, keep an eye open. Similarly, for heuristics also, always keep an eye open. Yes, Hemant. Yeah, I just uh, wanted to add that, you know, thank you, Rupali, for this exhaustive uh, session on uh, heuristics. I think the team needs to realize these are foundational skills and they are extremely important because this is something once you acquire, it should be at the back of your head whenever you look at any UI. Nobody has to tell you whether the UI is good or bad, you should be able to look at it and spot uh, good or bad practices just by looking at it. You know That's the skill you can only acquire by uh, practicing more than just you know getting that theoretical insight about what are the 10 rules. 
and you will start yourself building new rules based on you know which kind of platform you're working on be it ios android uh, web uh, or any other uh, kind of a, uh, environment could be you know working on creating reports or dashboards or creating saas products learning products and so on uh, i would definitely want this to be more uh, insight uh, like you know so uh, what i propose rupal is that post this <clears throat> can we identify one website which we can just share with the team and uh, this training session officially is over but uh, i want people to actually do a review of that particular website and maybe in the next next couple of sessions we have individuals actually present their uh, findings yeah so that basically would lead to how do you uh, let's say maybe uh, we can consider like how do you conduct a usability review correct so uh, i don't want to kind of formalize that by saying okay this is the template this is how you are supposed to do it let's see how people work it out i want people to think there is a lot of material online you can research it find it out for yourselves but i want people to a uh, be able to re review based on these 10 principles and uh, we'll give a one example and let everybody uh, uh, come up with their observations uh, by conducting a review there by themselves correct What yeah rest? Yes, Haheman. Like you said, you know, application is going to be important. So of these concepts, so let's work out what is the best way of doing this, so that you know it should not again be something that drops uh, as a momentum. Uh, let's see how we can do that. Yeah, let's discuss it offline and we can formalize it. Sure. So we'll update you guys on uh, what's next on this. Uh, but uh, apart from that, yeah, yeah I mean, uh, we have, uh, the next. Uh, uh, I would say a couple of sessions. We'll uh, we'll see because I I like the momentum where this whole thing is going. Uh, I want this to be more of an interactive session and not just one person, you know, uh, speaking. And so this was a training program, so for sure this was something different. But the intention is uh, to have an engaging platform for all of us and. Uh, in doing so, explore some new processes, UX processes and activities, which theoretically we might be knowing, but we have never applied. So uh, the, the, the whole idea is like, just like how uh, in this training program, we have practically started sharing examples of what our observations were on the heuristic principles. Uh, Moving forward, probably we'll be do conducting some activities around UX, where you know small, small ones, so that it does not uh, kind of encroach on your uh, project obligations. But uh, overall, uh, getting to know the different you know, aspects of UX, not theoretically but practically, I think that is the core intention. So I hope all uh, all of you are excited about it. And uh, if you have any other ideas, suggestions, you, you know, feel free to reach out to me or Pali or uh, any of the leads, including Krishna, Karuna, Om, and you know, uh, share your suggestions. We'll be more than happy to kind of you know uh, consider that. And thank you. Uh, is uh, Rupali, you have any concluding comment, or we can close? We can close. Good. Hello. Yes. Yeah, please possible, right? yeah. yeah thank I... you so much once again for uh, conducting this uh, session. Thank you for the opportunity, Hemant. Uh, and thank you for being great participants. Uh, I know that uh, somebody could be uh, start, still starting the journey. Some of us could be could have already done a lot of use, uh, you know, usability heuristics in the past, reviews, and applying this information. You've been very uh, good as participants. And uh, we've heard a lot of voices otherwise we, uh, that we typically don't get to hear people. So that's great. Thank you for making this an engaging and enriching session. Thank you. Thank you, Rupali, for this. Thank you, Himan. Thank you, Himan. Thank you, Rupali. And thank you. Thank you all. Have a good. Thank you, Rupali. Yeah. yeah.
थैंक यू हे सोहेल बोलो थम्सअप देना था थैंक यू दैट इज ऑलवेज एक्सपेक्टेड फ्रॉम सोहेल ना ऐसा कुछ दो थैंक यू ओके बाय 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 थैंक यू रूपाली मैम से कहना थैंक यू बाय